so last things last um well you didn't see this so i will i'll do the review for this yes uh, yes let's talk about the high note all right well here's the thing right i was tempted to watch the trailer for this and i actually did after the fact i was just kind of figuring out whether it was worth seeing or not right um the reason why i say this is because well this was a film that clearly was supposed to be released theatrically right but because of the pandemic it came through sorry it was released digitally through video on demand right so um i was there like you know maybe it might be good you know maybe you know it, it looks promising you know maybe it might be entertaining enough um but i just kind of glanced through the trailer and want to know much about what was going on but i saw the leads i was like okay okay i like the leads all right let's see what this is about so just jumping in what this show is about uh, it centers on the character of grace davis who's played by tracy ellis russ right and you know if, if, if you know your history yes she is the daughter of diana russ and ironically she does play a diana russ x uh, esque character right she is a multi you know multi-record selling grammy winning you know performer singer and all that kind of jazz um she has been in the business for years and yes even though she is showing her age basically you know she she she's not as young as she used to be um she still has a has a loyal fan base right her manager <laughs> is played by ice cube right he plays jack robinson right and he organizes all the gigs and stuff like that there's even a little subplot where he kind of he 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 basically want he doesn't want her to tour right because and yes it's kind of sleazy but I can't understand where you're coming from but I want to save money so <laughs> he just hook up well basically trying to organize this deal with um this LA casino so basically she would just be performing there nightly so he don't have to worry about covering costs when they travel from state to state kind of sleazy like I said before but. It kind of makes sense when you think about it, right? Yeah, you you say like, sleazy, I say economic. Yeah, yeah. Economically exactly. minded. Yeah. No, but the way how <laughs> the way how ice ice cube plays him, like you know, you know his ice cube. So you know he had to bring this the, the, the swag and everything, right? But he does come off like a dick at times, right? Especially <clears throat> when it comes to the character of Maggie, who is played by Dakota Johnson, right? And she basically is the personal assistant of Grace, right? But at the same time, do and I I don't know. I I, I just have a attachment to characters like these. Yeah, she's a little producer on the side, man. Yeah, she's very skilled in music production. Um, this she even kind of reworks some of Grace's demos and all that kind of stuff. So, because basically, what she wants to do, she actually wants to branch out as a producer. You know what I mean? Get her own talent, you know what I mean? Make music for them. You know, do that kind of music stuff that, that we we all secretly want to do. I, I like I want to do that. I don't know about you, Ashley, but yeah, I, I, I kind of want to, you know, produce and make beats and all that kind of stuff, right? Yeah, she, that, she that's still like a dream job. Industry. Sorry? She wants to be in the industry. Heavy. That's right. Yeah, exactly. And not just be under Grace's shadow. And yeah, essentially what the show is about is that... Um, she runs into this guy named David. He's a singer. Um, he's just a small-time performer, actually. He performs at little bars, stuff like that, right? He's very good with, you know, playing the acoustic guitar, too. Um, even, perf- even, like, recorded a couple of songs. She hears them, finds they're really badly produced, and, well, offers to produce some of his tracks, right? Um, not surprising uh, relationship blossoms, you know, whilst they're making music together. Wink, wink. Um, but while all this is while all this is going on, Grace kind of picks up that oh well, Maggie's not working the way that um, that she's supposed to. She she's distracted by something, right? And through some circumstances, she finds out oh well, you know what I mean? Like you're supposed to be working for me. Like what are you trying to do? Why are you trying to be this you know this producer, the psychiatrist? Kind of There's even a little moment actually where um, where a producer well. He's into EDM actually. Is calling to rework one of uh, Grace's old, well, popular hits, right? And then Maggie comes in and says, "Well, no, I don't like this. You're kind of, you know, burying the vocals and all this reverb and blah 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 blah. This is what you should do, right?" And you know, that this kind of pisses off Grace, 
and Jack Lee. You know, who is you to talk down to this this big producer? That kind of vibe now. And I'll stop there. So the good. Let's get the good out of the way. Um, I actually thought that the leads were great. Um, Dakota Johnson, who I didn't really know this was the was the actual star of the show. Because like if you look at like the thumbnail for the for the trailer for this, you will see Tracy Ellis Ross, right? Um there. So I thought it's like, oh, it's Tracy's show. But actually it's Dakota, right? But um yeah, I thought that she was she was fine in this. Um Um I like her character. I like the drive that she had. I like the fact that she was, you know, making beats on the side. That was really good. Um, one more producing, you know, really. That making beats per se, right? Um, and I actually thought that the relationship she had with the guy, David, I thought that was kind of sweet and endearing. You know I mean? Just the idea of we have this talent. We have this passion with, with music. Oh, and by the way, she is a music nerd, by the way. So she would call out... Oh well, this was a guy who performed this song before, and this group did the cover for that, and this group did the second cover for that. She's she's that type of person, right? Like how I am with movies, she's that way with with <laughs> with, with music, basically, right? Um, it's kind of funny also too because her dad actually is uh well a small a radio DJ actually. He's played by Bill Pullman. I was like, wait, you in this too? Okay, wow. But anyway, um. So I, I, I dug her drive, I dug her character, right? Um, I do, I did feel though, and this is just me talking about gripes a bit, that um, character-wise, it was kind of on the, you know, yeah, like they could have explored the character a little bit more. You know I mean, like, I understand the drive, but I thought that they just could have explored a little bit more, give it a little bit more, more meat in it, so you really root for when she's doing what she's doing, because, um, you kind of know where the story will go, right? Um, I know, I just kind of mixing good and bad. But yeah, this is kind of a, a drawback to the show. You kind of know where the show is going. Um, but because of the nature of it, you kind of want things to play out the way you, you would expect them to. You know what I mean? Because the show isn't requiring you to think a lot of it. It's not some heavy, you know, dramatically, you know, heavy show. It's not supposed to weigh you down or burn you down it's light you know what i mean it's it's laid back you can rock back relax it and just you know just 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 sit through it basically right you don't have to worry too much about all the emotional stuff that's going on but at the same time it does kind of lessen down it does kind of lessen down on the unpredictability of the show because yeah the show does go into a few different directions that you wouldn't expect but at the most part it's every bit as derivative as you, you would expect it to be. You kind of know where characters are going to lead up at the end. So when it happens, like, oh, yeah, it happened. Okay, well, yay, right? Um, and that, to me, was a drawback to the show. So this is actually the debut script from uh, Flora Greason, right? Greece. Greason, I think that's how you pronounce the name, right? Apparently, it was, it was an unproduced script, actually, right? Um, it was... Out for a while, and then, well, finally, they got a director in the form of Nisha Ganatra, um, who I remember last year made the film Late Night, but um, I didn't get around to watching that, even though it had McGill, Mindy Cal, I'm um, killing in it, right? But still, didn't get around to watching that, right? But yeah, as far as directing goes, I thought that it was it was it was well directed actually. Um, you know, great visuals. You know, I mean, as it is about music and entertainment, it got the feel of oh, well, these characters are in LA or you know, well, it's mostly set in Hollywood actually. So it got that sense of that Hollywood feel basically with the direction, the cinematography. Um, also, just weaving in and out of the lazy characters. You know, what I mean, um, the stuff that you see behind the scenes, stuff like that. I thought they handled that very well. But as it is a full time script, you could tell it is, right? It's not perfect. It could have had like probably a couple more rewrites just uh, flesh out the characters a lot more. I think at the end of the day, this is even the major drawback of the show. There's characters that being fully, fully fleshed out. Um they just they don't come off as one or two dimensional, but at the same time, it's just like, yes, I've seen a character like this before, the starving artists who likes you know who likes to play music but you don't believe you have a chance to make it the person who the understudy to the to the big artist who wants to break out in her own way but she doesn't have that much confidence in herself and of course the artist herself who believes that you know she's reaching that peak she's too old she's not going to be relevant anymore so 
what's the next step and all that kind of stuff. Um, touching on her, uh, Tracy Ellis um, Ross, she actually is the best character in the whole show. Just, but easy, just just by a landslide. Um, she embodies that character very well. You know what I mean? Even though, like, I, I like the fact that she's not trying to be her mom, right? She's trying to be her own diva character. I dug that, right? There's even a little moment where they touch on the fact that not only is she old, but, you know, she's black, right? And she kind of brings up the, the, the fact that it was hard for her to actually become the icon, the music icon that she is today, right? But they just kind of brush it over in like about a couple of uh, sentences of dialogue. They could have gone a little bit deeper because I felt that was like a really strong moment, right? And then when there's a certain reveal, a certain twist, not so much a twist, but a reveal which may surprise people, but at the same time, it may not. It would have added so much weight to what's going on, right? Um, and last things last, though, before I get to rating, they do the thing where they will call out, they will they will name check celebrities. So they will name check, you know, big celebrities that were, you know, that were big for like some years now, but they will do it in such a way where it's like, oh, okay, they talk about Taylor Swift. Oh, oh, they talk about this person. Oh, you know what I mean? To kind of make the, the audience believe that, oh, we, we are in the real world, guys. And we deal with real life celebrities here. They could have at least added one or two celebs. Like, the only, like, big, like, okay, so, like, the one, right, so the producer that I mentioned, right, was played by Diplo. And, like, wait, the, like, this is the only recognizable artist I see in here in the show. Like, musical artists I talk about, right? But yeah, I was expecting like a few more familiar faces there to help sell the fact that yes, we are in the world of Hollywood, we are in the world of music. So let's see a, a celebrity or two show up now. But this name checking thing all the time to make me feel as if, oh wow, they they, they call Taylor Swift. Ooh, you know what I mean? I, I just felt it was was just kinda painfully awkward, you know what I mean? Like, oh gosh, man, like like this is a Universal Studios release, right? Like Y'all could not bring in at least one person to show a face. Like, I did see and have them do some big acting moment, like, say, you know, Cardi B or um, Nicki Minaj or something like that. But still, just bring in somebody to to do, to have a little moment. And that's just one person. But that's just me. But yeah, other than that, though, um, the show is fine. It is what it is. I saw it and I, I, I wasn't angry after watching it. I did find myself pleasantly entertained by it. Um, but it's not a perfect show, mind you, right? Um, it is very, it is on the derivative side of things. You've seen shows like this before or shows of this particular nature before. So, yeah, when things play out the way they do, it's just like, yeah, okay. But if you do like those stories about, you know, um, characters realizing that, you know, they are, they, that they are more to, um, they are more to them than who than, than what they than what they actually think now. You know what I mean? Like just the come up into becoming something or someone greater. I like stories like that, right? So that's why I say I dug Dakota's character because yeah, that's, I, that's I, like I, little I, underdog I, stories. Yeah, but it's not exactly an underdog story per se. But you do like to well root for the underdog, um, so to speak, right? You do want to see how that character did, uh, get through and you know live his or her dreams and overcome whatever obstacles that. You know what I mean? So I, I dug that about the show. And because I just like the world of music, I was just drawn in for the word go. Um, yes, the show does... Uh, you could tell that the script needed a couple of rewrites. I just felt like character-wise we could have gotten more out of the leads. But for what it is, it's, it's fine. It's, it's one of the shows that I would not have spent a lot of cash on to see in theaters. This would have been a, a, a matinee film at, at best. Like You just watch it just to, to kill time until another movie comes out, like a bigger movie comes out, you know what I mean? So, yeah, if if this is your your kind of show, if you're just looking for some um, light and, you know, I don't want to say positive, but just easy, you know what I mean? Just an easy watch, you just sit through, you have fun with it, you enjoy it, you know what I mean? It's bright, it's upbeat for it is. Yeah, give this a look, man. If you're looking for something a little bit more deeper and darker and I guess more cynical or just really showing how the music industry works, then yeah, you, you're not going to enjoy this at all. So, written wise uh, I'll give this a decent show of five, man. It was alright. It was alright for what it was. Not going to be best off for sure, but, you know, it, it has its audience, right? And, yeah, I would recommend that you do check it out if you're just looking for something 
light and you know just something to just rock back and relax and take in. So yeah, uh, yeah, give it a look if if you if you're interested. If what I've just said or just the premise or the trailer just didn't wow you, then yeah, I wouldn't recommend that um, you you give you, you you check out this movie. But like I said, if you're into this kind of stuff, yeah, give 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 high note a look. It it, it won't hurt. It right, won't disappoint. <laughs> it, it it may, but it just depends on how high your expectations are. This sounds like a perfect um, married couple movie, though. So I'm gonna take, I'm gonna, based off your recommendation, I'm gonna take it in. After, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah. After we wrap up, I'm gonna actually tell my wife let's watch it right now. Yeah, please, please do actually. I, I, I would like to like to hear your thoughts. Um, well, we could you know talk outside of this program here. You know, I, I like to hear yeah, thoughts yeah, on that. Yeah, of course. Yeah, cool, cool. 